Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Bro. We're starting a new channel that focuses mainly on the tech scene in the Philippines, especially laptops. Wala pang channel kasi gumagawa ng mga reviews on laptops and how to take care of laptops, especially during this time in COVID. And that's all you're using nowadays, diba? So, ito na yun. Joy. So today we're going to look at that really famous Asus TUF A15 1660Ti Ryzen 7 8-core hardcore i9 9900K equivalent processor. So this laptop is notorious siya para sa CPU temperatures. Niya. Kasi this Ryzen 7 4800H na ito ay on the level ng i9. So imagine mo lang, you have that desktop level i9 processor pinapasok dito sa sobrang maliit na Asus laptop na yung sa ilalim pangit pa yung vents This Asus Tough A15 comes with the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660 Ti 6GB GDDR6 the Ryzen 7 4800H 16GB um, RAM 512 SSD uh, 144Hz display that has really bad sRGB and upgraded 90W battery so for the ports, we have the Ethernet port, the HDMI port, two USB 3.0 ports, a USB-C port, and an audio jack. And on the right side, we have one USB 2.0 port and one Kensington lock. The Asus TUF 15 doesn't have that all-aluminum build quality or like that nice unibody build of Mac, but it's still made up of this really robust, you know, plastic that kind of feels like aluminum. Parang siyang metal, pero Peking metal, but it is robust. And with this type of hard plastic, now you'd kind of think that you have an aluminum top lid, but it's just plastic. So you actually have a single lit RGB full keyboard here with a numpad that has pretty good key travel. Keyboard flex isn't so bad as well, but if you press it hard, then it flexes. Well, as you can see here, there's pretty bad screen flex, but baka malakas kasi ako. Pero, I think it's just because the, the quality of the top lid is mostly made of plastic. So this display is a 144Hz FHD, Full HD, 1080p IPS display. Um, compared to all the other gaming laptops, this is one of the slowest 144Hz displays that you could have in a gaming laptop. It is a whopping 24ms milliseconds. Compared to mga ibang gaming laptops, for example, the MSI GS66 or the Asus Zephyrus GU502GW, they have 1 and 3 millisecond displays. 1 and 3 ms. Ito ay 24 ms. So if you're that type of gamer that plays about 5 or 6 hours a day na casual lang, you enjoy with friends, and you don't have to win every single game or get every single shot, this laptop might be suited for you. Are you a video editor? Are you a graphic designer? Because this laptop is not for you. So if you need high color reproduction rates of 99% sRGB or 80% Adobe RGB para maganda yung mga works mo, do not buy this laptop. Because this laptop has a whopping 58% sRGB and 42% Adobe RGB. So again, this laptop is not for creators. This is a purely gaming laptop. Now into the controversial part of this laptop, the performance, specifically yung CPU performance ito. Because it is sporting a 4800H, which is a very powerful 8-core processor, I keep on repeating that, sorry na ha, pero malakas talaga yung processor. And look at these cooling components. Look at this fan. Look at this heatsink. Do you think these components could cool such a powerful CPU? I think not, but that's okay. Because if you're playing games, you don't really need an 8-core processor to help you run your games faster. In the end, what matters is the GPU of the laptop. And what the problem here is, is that the CPU runs so hot that it heats up the GPU as well. So what do you do to remedy this? Simply put, Ryzen controller. So Ryzen controller is a third-party program that helps you undervolt. If some of you people don't know what undervolting is, undervolting is lowering the voltage of the CPU so that the temperatures don't reach its peak. So you lower the performance of the CPU by about 5 to 10% and you lower the temperatures drastically. With these settings that we put on other Asus Tough A15s, we've lowered the temperatures from about 102 to 105 
all the way down to about 80 to 85, which is very, very safe for this kind of laptop. That's why mag subscribe na kayo. Dal sa amin, mas maganda ng temperatures ng laptop mo. So, as you can see here, the Ryzen 7 of the Asus Tough A15 can actually outperform the G14's Ryzen 9. And if you compare those two Ryzen CPUs to the i9 of Intel, it's no comparison. That G75 comes with an RTX 2080 and it still can't beat a 1660 Ti paired with a 4800H. So on higher end games like Assassin's Creed, you really won't be able to play on max graphics with 37 FPS. But on games like Dota 2 and Valorant, magagamitin mo talaga yung 144Hz display ng laptop mo. But again, if you're going to use this laptop for productivity, which is also a good option, especially for video editors because of the performance, use an external screen with a better sRGB rating. Battery life. So this laptop actually comes with that big boy 90 watt hour battery. Yung isang malaking chunky battery through this whole bottom panel. Unlike the local variants here in the Philippines, which provide the 48 watt hour, which is about two to three hours, this laptop can push about five to six hours under light loads. For example, browsing, Netflix, and ganun. It's actually a pretty good travel laptop. But the problem is that we travel, so it's useless yung big battery. <laughs> Subgradeability naman, it's pretty easy to open the bottom panel of this laptop. It only comes with 11 screws and there's one screw on the upper left hand corner which does not come off. So if you plan on upgrading this laptop, don't try to force this left screw because it's a screw that's stuck there. I don't know why it is but it is. So on the bottom panel, we have the two M.2 drives. They both support SATA 3 and NVMe. And we also have here two DDR4 RAM slots that are up to 3200 RAM. And we have the 90 watt hour battery, which is huge. And we have no space for that 2.5 inch HDD slot. So for the verdict, number one, we have the 1660 Ti 6GB non Max Q, which performs pretty good. Two, we have a nice 144 Hertz. Not good for creators, but good for gamers, but not good for hardcore competitive gamers. So it's still kind of good. Number three, we have that Ryzen 740. No, that's that's not a pro. I'm sorry, that's not a pro. Number three, we have the 90 watt hour battery, which is really good for traveling with the five to six to seven hour battery life. Pero walang taong nakta travel ngayon, eh, diba? So I'm not sure if that's a pro or a con. Um, you also have the single zone RGB keyboard and another thing I just found out right now is that you can open the laptop with one finger Wow, you can do that one finger open And for the cons we have one really bad sRGB display two really slow 144 Hertz display three no HDD slot I guess that's a con for now Four, you have the Ryzen 7 4800H which explodes and burns in heat. That's it. I think that's the only con. This laptop is actually super bang for the buck. Okay, siya, sulit sana siya, but you have the thermal problems, which again are easily fixed with Ryzen controller. But that's that one issue. Are you willing to buy a laptop that already has thermal problems out of the box? Or are you willing to spend a little more and get a similar laptop with the same specs and same performance, but a lot better thermal cooling. So, maramik salamat sa inyo lahat. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this uh, five to 10 minutes, I don't even know how long this video is yet, but I hope that those minutes were worth it for you. I hope it helped you think about this laptop and think about what you want to purchase for your next laptop, gaming laptop buy. And if you have any more questions, if you have any ideas on what videos we should make, Please comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe as it will really help us decide if we want to push through with Tech Bro Philippines. Mm -hmm.